Hi everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. Uh, I've been showing you in the last couple episodes how to uh, uh, set up this this camera rig that we've got here with uh, the Tilta Cage. And uh, last one, I showed you how to use the Nikon lenses. I've I dug, I've gotten rid of the matte box for now. Uh, but what we're going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you how to set up this camera, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, uh, with an MFT mount, Micro Four Thirds mount. Uh, I'm going to show you guys how to set up the menu system in this. All right, everybody. So I've got uh, my creepy little mannequin assistant here front of the camera and right now we've got these like grids on and everything somebody's been using this camera and have, uh, kind of has their own settings on it so first thing i'm going to show you is how to factory reset your camera you have to have the latest firmware update because if you didn't have a, a if you don't know, have a previous firmware update on the black magic camera uh there was a time that they didn't have a factory reset but now they have installed that so i'm going to go to the little menu button right here is the little menu button that gets inside the menu you also have that same menu Right there, there's a touch screen, so you can have the same menu button up there as you do here. But now uh, I'm going to go under, you got record, monitor, audio, uh, and setup. I'm going to go under setup and arrow through this. Down here, you've got these little nodes that show you what menu that you're, you're on. I'm going to go over, I'm going to keep menuing through this. You can see that little dot changing. Uh, but I'm going to arrow through this until I get to, uh, I think it's the third dot over, which is, uh, there we go, all, all the way to the end there. Uh, we've got reset camera up at the top here. I'm going to hit that button right there it'll ask you if you want a factory reset and i'm going to say yes reset so this has all the camera settings back to normal back where it started from and it boots back up and you tell it what language language you want i'm going to do english go in and we got a very loggy looking very flat image so let's go let's show you how to start setting these things up this is fairly uh pretty uh intuitive as far as how to set these cameras up. Uh, a lot of these, you see the settings up on top of the screen and at the bottom there. Uh, and you just basically, with the touch screen, you just basically hit it. Right now, I've got an S, a solid state hard drive plugged into the USB USB-C port on my side. So it doesn't have any internal cards. I don't have an SD card. I don't have a compact flash card, which are these options down here. But if you do, you can just basically push those and format them. But right now I am using, I, took, I don't have any cards in internally. I have a USB-C uh, solid state drive. So you can push on that card to ch uh, check it out right now. The format SD is grayed out. It's not letting me do that. That is the so that is an SD card. And that is, a, uh, that is the format, the CFast card, if you have it uh, internally. So if we want to format this card right here, all you have to do is you have to click on it. Uh, if you do have multiple cards that are inside, let, actually, let's show you that first. If you do have multiple cards that are inside the, your camera here, and you want, to, uh, if you say you got a CFast card and an SD and the solid state connected, and you're using them for, for different purposes, I'm going to go to record here on, on uh, in our record menu, and I'm going to arrow over till I find... Uh, the right one and you can tell which preferred media you want it to default to you can tell it to go to cfast you can tell it to go to sd you can tell it to go to usb right now i just have the usb plugged in so that's all it's going to do that's all it's going to do is go to that you can even do it to the fullest card which is kind of weird uh all right, anyway let's go menu out of there touch your screen by the way if your screen if your screen not uh, if your menu items do t uh, disappear on the screen you can just tap it once and you and the display items will come back up here so if i hit the the hard drive right there number three uh, brings up the USB uh, drive right now. That's the only one that I have in. This is a little weird because they've got these format ones for the CFast and the SD right there, but they don't have it for, for this card right here. So I'm going to hit drive list. It'll take you to that card. And you basically select the card, and now you say format drive. So it's kind of in a little bit deeper, darker uh, menu system there. So now I'm going to hit format drive. And I like this. It'll say this will erase all and rename your drive. You say format drive, and then it tells you format drive by holding the format button down for three seconds. That way you just don't accidentally click it and go, oh crap, I just formatted my drive. You actually have to press your thumb. So unless you like uh, have it in the format drive and then you pass out and your thumb lands on the camera and squishes it down for three seconds, uh, you're not going to be in trouble. So, so I'm intentionally holding that down for three seconds. And now it's formatting my drive. Hit OK. And now I can get out of there just by hitting this little menu key right there. And you can hit the menu again, and it gets you out of the screen, out of that completely. Uh, let's go through some of the settings up here uh, on, on the screen. First of all, up here, you've got uh, your frames per second at 24, shutter speed at 100, uh, 180. And the way you change those, those are internal camera items that you change there. We're going to go to our menu button here, and we're going to go to uh, under record here. We're going to, uh, first of all, while we're under this screen right here, uh, there are some things that I like to make sure that we're set up on. We are on our man, the first dot. Let's go to our first dot here, and we're going to start there, and we're going to go through the menu. So we're under our record screen. We're under our, our uh, codec and quality settings. 
Uh, keep in mind, this camera does shoot in RAW. It also shoots in ProRes. Uh, if you want something, uh, so, so if you want the RAW footage, it'll take up a little bit more footage, especially depending on uh, on what, what level of quality you're doing here. Uh, you've got constant bitrate and constant quality here. Constant bitrate is going to give you some compression options here. And I have noticed when you're using uh, these compression options, if you use 12 to 1, you usually you do start finding some noise, even if your ISO is, uh, is set properly. So I find that uh, if you, uh, it's going to make your files larger, but 3 to 1 is a, is a really good option to record in. That, that's going to be a really good high quality uh, uh, raw footage. It might, but keep in mind, the higher quality you get, uh, the more of a toll it will take on the system while you're editing. So if you don't have a fast enough editing system, you might want to go to 12 to 1 or even do like a ProRes and go ProRes 422. Uh, I would say just look up the codec, see which ones you want to use. I like shooting. I've really enjoyed shooting in RAW on these cameras. And I've been shooting. I'm, I've been like just purchasing larger hard drives. Uh, for smaller projects, and I just go three to one, which gives you a really good quality. Uh, all right, so down here at the bottom, uh, you've got resolution. So you've got 4K DCI, uh, two, 2.4 to one. Uh, keep in mind, uh, the, and then you have Ultra HD. So Ultra HD is going to be basically 16 by nine, which is regular television set size uh, aspect ratio. It's a 16 by nine or, or 1.78 to 1, which is the same as 16 by 9 uh, aspect ratio. That's what most television screens and phone screens are built as is 16 by 9. So if you're shooting for computer and for YouTube, you might want to go Ultra HD. Uh, True 4K, this is a real full-on cinematic widescreen here. This is not uh, commonly used in, in theaters. It is, I shouldn't say it's not commonly used. It's not as commonly used as 4K, as the uh, DCI 40, 4096 by 2160. This is 1.89 to 1. This is 2.40 to 1 or 2.39 to 1 uh, here. Uh, two, they got 2.40 to 1 right there, which is really, really wide for the kind of the big epic movies. But nor most movies are shot in the 1.89 to 1 aspect ratio. That, that's, that's the most commonly used one. If you want to go wider, that's cool. Keep in mind that if you're using anamorphic lenses, if you're using the 1.3 uh, anamorphic lenses, you want to use those. Those are built for a 16 by 9 image sensor. So you want to use Ultra HD. A lot of people think like, oh, I'm going to use 2.40 to 1 because that's what, what my I want my image to be. No, uh, it's it, those lenses are built to squeeze down to a 16 by 9 image sensor. And then it will give you a 2.40 to 1, but it's built for the, the cameras that have, uh, like the Sony cameras that have the, um, the 16 by 9 image sensors. Uh, so the Ultra HD, if you're using uh, anamorphic lenses, and then you will get the 2.40 when you de-squeeze. But otherwise, if you're just doing regular cinema, I would recommend using the 4K DCI uh, 4096 by 2160. All right, there's some other options down here. You have this anamorphic lights again, uh, 2.8K anamorphic. Ignore that one. Those are for a different, uh, that's for a different lens set if you're, you, but the, one of the more commonly uh, used lenses are the Siri uh, anamorphic lenses, which are the 1.3 uh, squeeze, which means you use the Ultra HD there. So, all right, monitor. Uh, you have some monitor options here. If you got an HDMI cable plugged in, you can go. Uh, you can go HDMI or LCD, and you have some options of what to display to HDMI if you're going outside the camera or within your L L uh, LCD, which is this screen right here on your camera. Uh, you have this display 3D light because if you go back to our main menu here, uh, it looks very, very flat. This camera automatically shoots in log, uh, which is a very flat profile, which gives you a higher dynamic range while you're shooting, especially if you're shooting outside. It's a great format to shoot in, but, uh, but you don't want to see it flat when you're shooting. So what you can do is you can go into uh, your menu here and you can turn on your 3D uh, your 3D LUT, which will give you more of a contrasty color look here. But this is not recording this to the image. It's basically just uh, doing that live to your screen so you can kind of see what it's going to look like uh, in the end. But this also has a button on the top here. You got three buttons on the top here. You have your three buttons here on the top. Uh, the left button turns on your turns on your false color, which will show. The middle button will automatically toggle that uh, 3D LUT. You don't have to go into the menu to do that. You just hit this middle button, and it toggles. And you can see. Let's move my screen back here. So now you can see as I've hit that middle button, you can see that 3D LUT turning on and off. So that's just a quick way of doing that. Let's go back to my menu here, and you can see this thing uh, change between my LUT and my flat log footage. Uh, so most of the time when I'm shooting, I like it in that light look. So you can kind of see what it's going to look like when you're finished shooting. You do have your focus assist here, uh, which is going to make your image a little bit more grainy here. And you can see, uh, kind of the, the, as we get things in focus here, 
You can see that little kind of hard edged outline coming around uh, some of the details on that image. So you can kind of see what's in, in focus. I like having the focus assist on so I can tell what is in focus when I'm looking at the screen. Uh, let's turn on our LUT there. Going to go back. And then the third button here on the right up, uh, up on the top uh, controls this frame guide thing. I kind of don't like frame guides. I've gotten used to not using frame guides and I just kind of look at the image. But if you do like frame guides, just get out of the menu there and you hit your frame guide on. It gives you a frame guide. However you decide to set up your frame guide right here. This is 2.40 to 1. I mean, if you're going to be using that, I don't use it because if I want 2.40 to 1, I just go and set that up in the menu and tell it to record that rather than a frame guide that I'm going to cut out later. So safe area guide just shows you if you're if you're worried about uh, things leaving the screen over on the edge there. It just tells you kind of keep your image within this frame. And then if you put it on a television set that crops a little bit on the edges, you're not going to lose information on the edges there. That, that's important to your image. Focus assist, we've got to turn on safe guide area, false color. A false color here, if we turn that on, and that's the toggle button up here on the top, the left-hand one, it's going to show you this uh, this false color uh, screen right here. What this does is show you exposure levels. As we turn up our exposure, watch this. Watch the colors change. Uh, the the uh, grayish color is going to grayish is going to say that your image is at proper exposure level. It's a kind of a middle gray exposure level. So that's really what you're going for when you're looking at exposing somebody's face uh, is getting kind of that middle gray See on the background there, that's middle gray. Let's get a middle gray on the face here. So with false color, when you get to purple, purple is going to be basically uh, detail loss in the darks. So as you get to purple, you're going to get detail uh, loss in the darks. As you get to, uh, it goes up to blue. Uh, bluish is kind of near uh, detail exposure loss. As you get to gray and kind of greenish, you're going to get uh, properly exposed. Middle gray is where you want probably, especially like skin tone, you want that properly exposed around middle gray or to, to or to a little bit into the green. Uh, as as you get into yellow and red, that's going to be overexposure. Uh, and red is like uh, absolute detail loss in the highlights. Uh, so the middle gray is a good place to go. This is a good way of like just measuring your exposure level uh, to make sure to see where you you are getting detail loss. Uh, so let's turn that off. Go into our menu here, and we're going to go to the next menu here under monitor here. They do have a 1.33 to squeeze. So when you uh, put on an anamorphic lens, if your lens looks uh, stretched, you can hit the 1.33 to squeeze right there. Uh, moving on to the next one. And all these options are fairly similar for the HDMI that you can send these items specifically through HDMI to an external monitor rather than do it on your monitor here. Has a colored lines, so it has your focus, it has your peaking top. You have peaking and colored, colored lines. I prefer the colored lines. That's something they've added recently. The peaking just makes your image a little bit more contrasty where colored lines actually adds colored lines and you can have uh, your focus color. You can change down here to different colors depending on what sort of color scheme you're working with and what, uh, and what sort of environment. And you can increase and decrease the amount of your focus assist. Go to the next one, and under the next one, you have a whole bunch of frame guide things. Like I said, you can just kind of play with these and see what sort of frame guides that you get. Uh, you have thirds. If you do thirds, you can go back and take a look at your image here, and you have these third lines to help you kind of properly frame up your uh, your, your subject. If you're trying to frame them on the third, you've got those lines to help out where you need that uh, guided. But like I said, i kind of gotten used to where I don't need them anymore, so I'm going to turn that, turn that off. And then you have your LEC bright brightness and your HDMI one. Uh, let's go to audio. Audio, I uh, I don't use a whole lot because I'm usually shooting films with these and we usually have a sound department that's recording the sound. So I kind of like having the camera, I kind of like having my audio on none when I record. Sometimes you can use it for reference audio, but if you're hired as a just a cinematographer to shoot something, oftentimes I'm like, I don't care about sound. I don't want to have uh, any extra sound recorded on my on my camera. As an editor, I kind of prefer that as well. I just like to have the uh, the film media and then the... Uh, the film media just be the the picture, and then the the image be then the sound uh, department records the sound. But that's just a preference. But the default is have your camera left and right it has a, an internal microphone, and then you can change your levels in here as well. Uh, but then if you have different types, like if you have an XLR and XLR adapter that plugs right into this camera, you have an XLR to basically this mini port that they have on here, right down here, uh, is your sound port. You have to get that, and you'll notice that it has three points, which is your XLR basically. You have to get a regular XLR to a, a mini XLR to plug into this uh, if you want to record audio directly onto the camera, which I, I suggest if you're doing like a, especially documentary and interviews and whatnot, it's a good ways, way to go. All right, go up on to the next one, setup here. Uh, shutter angle versus shutter speed. So explain shutter angle a little bit. Shutter speed is how long every individual frame is exposed for. Standard for film is 1 48th of a second for 24 frames per second. Um, and that's one thing if we go into record that we need to cover here as we go through here. We, we are shooting at 24 frames per second. 
you do have a high frame rate switch right here, which is a quick switch, which turns it from that it turns up from 24 frames per second to 60 frames per second. If you just push that, what well, that's on now, it is recording at 24 or at 60 frames per second, but conforming to 24, which gives you two and a half times a uh, slow motion speed. You can do up to 120 frames per second on this. If you change your resolution to HD, which is 1920 by 1080, then you can go into your frames per second and max it out at 120 frames per second, which is pretty cool. So if we go to video, so if we go back here and we go HD 1920 by 1080, and then go back to our frame rate here, we can increase those, that, those frames per second up to 120 frames per second, which is nice. Then it conforms it to 24 frames per second but we are gonna go for 4K. When you're in that 4K, all you have to do now is just hit your HFR, and now it's in high frame rate at 60 frames per second. You push it again, and it goes back to 24 frames per second, which is shown right up there at the top, so. All right, guys, with the with the frame rate explained there, uh, we're back at 4K, we're at 24 frames per second, and now we're gonna go to uh, exposure time. Let's talk about exposure. We're gonna go to setup here, and you have two options for what is called exposure time which is how long every individual frame is exposed to light for. You have shutter angle and shutter speed. With film, you want the old film style is shutter angle. Shutter angle is basically a 180 degree shutter, shutter that blacks out the light that rotates. And as it rotates, uh, half the time it exposes the film and half the time it is moving the film to the next frame. Uh, and then it can repeat the process again. So, uh, so that is shutter angle. And shutter angle it does, is uh, standard is 180 degree shutter angle. So half the time the film is being blocked and being moved, and the other half of the time is being exposed once the film is holding still. Uh, so that's shutter angle. So 180 degree shutter angle. If we go to back to our screen here, you have a shutter angle right up here, 180, which is standard. You can click on that and cut your exposure time in half, which is uh, now we're recording at one. Uh, now we're recording at a 90 degree shutter angle, which is re means we're letting light in a quarter of the amount of time. So in uh, in shutter speed time, if we go back, let's go to shutter speed. That is actual how long of a fraction of a second you expose your frame for. Uh, so now we see that the, the 90 degree shutter angle is equivalent to 1 196th of a second, which is a very short time. And we get less motion blur, but we again, we get less exposure. But standard for that is going to be half exposure time at 24 frames per second. It's 1 48th of a second. And that is the exact same thing as 180 degree shutter angle for film. Standard is 180 degree shutter angle or 1 48th of a second. So 180 degree shutter angle or 1 48th of a second. I like shutter angle because I'm used to the language that they use with film. Iris, you don't have iris control here unless you have a lens with the pins pins on it that control the lens. This is a cinema lens that I've got on here. So this lens, you manually dial in the f-stops on, uh, on your lens here. So on actual cinema lenses, you have your f-stop right here. Your f-stop is basically the amount of light you're letting into your camera. And here you got to manually dial that in and get, uh, that's, that's cutting the amount of light out. And now you're letting more light in by taking it this direction toward the smaller uh, t-stop number or f-stop number here. But if you're using like a can like a Canon uh, still photography lens, you can hit the iris button and you can basically ch uh, change your iris for that Canon lens that you're using. With this, I like using the cinema lenses. You just grab your uh, right now. I've just got my finger on the on the f-stop here, and I'm uh, increasing my exposure and decreasing my exposure. That's the, basically the amount. That's the amount of light you're letting into the camera and exposing your image with. Uh, so that's a manual control there, not controlled in camera. But you do control the ISO. Uh, which is right here. ISO is set at 400 right here. Standard for uh, for film is around 650 to 800. Uh, 400 is a uh, is a nice exposure is is a decent exposure level depending on how much light you have. If you have less light, you'll want to crank this up to around like 800 ISO. You just basically click that with your finger, and that doubles the sensitivity of your uh, image sensor, going from 400 to 800, 800 to 1600, and so on. And vice versa, as you're cutting this down, you take it down to from 400 to 200 uh, that's 160 to 200 400 200 you basically cut your uh the amount of your sensitivity in half that's how sense sensitive your sense your sensor is to light this is a native iso of 800 so if you go over 800 you can start introducing a lot of grain into your image so it's usually best to keep your iso 800 or less that's why i like using a speed booster too because you get uh, more light that's the previous episode i talked about the speed booster so that's your iso so your three types of exposure are your shutter speed 
your uh, ISO, and then your f-stop, uh, your aperture, letting your 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 the, the a certain amount of light into your camera. But sensor sensitivity for ISO, iris is exposure amount, and the uh, shutter speed or the, the shutter angle is uh, exposure time. So let's go back into our menu here, and under setup, we're going to arrow over. You do have uh, presets you can do as function buttons right up here. You can change the function buttons and assign them to, to uh, your function one, two, and three button that's on the top. You can uh, reassign those to features that you use the most. Uh, but you do have other things like uh, wi like white balance. A lot of these things you can just access from the main screen. So I'm going to get back to white balance here in a minute. You do have things like your tally LED lights. I'm not going to get into these. We're more in kind of more the cinematic setup here that you can get into. Things like turning the dimming your, your camera as it sits there for a while and not being used so it doesn't use as much power. Bluetooth connections here to connect to a Bluetooth device. Reset the camera. We showed that at the beginning. And there you go. So... Let's go back to our main screen, and then we're going to cover LUTs here afterwards, L-U-T-S or LUTs. Uh, but white balance is an important thing here as well. So I'm going to hit WB up there, white balance. And right now it's set at 5600. I am under 5600 uh, color temperature lights in here, So, uh, but that is sunlight essentially. And you do have these little icons right there to show you're under sunlight for 5600, incandescent, fluorescent, there, so you have all these different color temperatures here. If you screw up and don't choose the right color temperature, if you're shooting in RAW, you don't. You can j just change it right back. It retains all the color information if you're shooting in RAW. So since I'm under the sunlight here, since I'm under the LEDs, which are 5600, or daylight temperature, I'm going to go on uh, daylight temperature to set uh, my uh, white balance. But once again, this is all RAW footage that's shooting, but the standard here is to do color temperature with a 10 to 10, which the camera uh, at 5600 does automatically here. Those are the main features on the screen. You do have a histogram at the bottom that uh, shows you where your exposure levels are. If you're overexposed to the right or underexposed to the left, it's kind of a concentration of, of pixels on your red channel, green channel, blue channel, of colors that are being recorded, and then the white channel, which is your brightness level. That's to, that helps with, uh, with exposure right there. You do have your zoom here for helping, helping you focus. So if you're trying to focus on something, you can zoom in, do a quick zoom in on it. Uh, let's turn the iris down so we see a little bit of detail there. There we go. But the zoom feature uh, helps so you can uh, focus a little bit better. Then you can grab your focus and focus until you get a good sharp focus. And then you, and you'll notice it's a little grainy when you zoom in like that. That's because it's zooming up to the image and you're really seeing the, the kind of natural grain that's occurring there. So just push that zoom again and then it zooms back out. But now let's go into LUTs. LUTs is the way it displays your image. Uh, like I said, first of all, this camera shoots in RAW. And the LUT that it decides to show is basically log. Log is footage that looks very flat. It records it in that, so it gets a higher dynamic grain. grain. But then uh, if you're going to color grade this later on, this shows you what it's basically going to look like when it's going to be color graded in post-production. So like I said, even though I push this button on top, that's displaying a LUT right there, a look. And is what lookup table is what it stands for. But you push this button on top. Oops, you push this middle button on the top. And it displays it in that log format, very flat looking. And then when you push it again, now it's displaying it in that LUT. So under the LUT, that's going to tell you what type of uh, a LUT is being displayed here. You have the film to extended video, uh, Gen 5 film to Rec 2020 hybrid log gamma. This displays it in a Rec 2020. You'll see slightly different images, uh, colored images as you do this. More contrast, more saturation. Uh, the standard one that's usually used is the extended video, for especially for film. Uh, but then they got some other options down here, Rec 2020 uh, for film, and then film to video. I like the extended video. These are different LUTs. If, if you click on different ones here, you're going to have a different look for, for each LUT. But like I said, the standard one that's used for if you're just doing kind of filmmaking is the Gen Film uh, is the film to extended video uh, LUT. And that way it looks like it's uh, um, it looks a bit contrasty. It looks a bit saturated, uh, just so you can see what the what it's going to what it might look like when you take it into post production. Okay. So the last thing I want to cover here on this camera for the setup on that's most of setup on the camera here is playback. I'm gonna hit record here, record button on top. You can see the time code rolling there. My clip is rolling. I'm gonna pan back and forth and we get our little movie going on here. Whee! Okay. So there's our shot. I'm gonna stop and record one more shot. So for this one, just to be different, let's do a tilt up and down. So I'm tilting up and down, tilting up and down, tilting up and down. Okay, that was our second shot. Really exciting, I know, but we're going to stop. Okay, so if you hit the playback button here, this is so you can play back footage that you have shot. You hit the play button. It brings back uh, the the most recent one that, you, that you've shot here. And this timeline here represents basically all the footage that you've shot here. Uh, and now you can use these little uh, items here at the bottom to skip through to different uh, clips. That's where my next clip uh, begins right there. And you can press play. 
and it'll play back the clip. There's my tilt. If I want to see the previous one, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to arrow back and it jumps to the beginning of this clip here. If you do arrow back again, it jumps to the beginning of the of the previous clip. And you do keep hitting this and it keeps jumping through all your clips on this timeline here. And then you can just press play and play back your footage. You can grab the playhead basically and, and slide through it. And then you can basically see all your shots by quickly just kind of streaming through all these clips here. Now, if you want to get out of the playback, you basically put your finger on the record button on the top here. You can see my finger over here. And you barely, 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 barely push it just a little bit, and it pops out. If you push it too hard, it'll start recording. But you just barely push it down, down a, a little bit, pressure it just a little bit, and it pops out of that menu, and you're back to the record menu. And now you can hit record and record again. All right, well, that is about it on setting up your camera. We've, we showed you how to build the camera. We showed the basic menus in here. There's a whole lot more menus in here that I haven't gone over, but these are, these are the basics on how to get your camera up and running, uh, get a good exposure, get a good uh, focus, and go ahead and start shooting your movies. So thank you for watching Chin Fat. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know.